Everyone knows they should be saving money, but most people don't take it a step further and specify what that saving should be for. I've worked with clients who would save money consistently, but never had a strategy around that savings. There are certain things everyone should be saving for, but it's not always clear what those things should be. Don't get me wrong. Saving money just to save money is better than the alternative, not saving money at all. But when you don't have a purpose for your savings, it can be easy to spend it on things you don't necessarily need. If you're unsure about what to save for, in this episode, I'm sharing eight things everyone should be saving for over time. Let's dive in. Welcome to the City Girl Savings Podcast. I'm Raya Reeves, founder and finance coach of City Girl Savings. I turned my life around with budgeting many years ago, and now I'm on a mission to help others do the same. I fully believe that you can enjoy your life on a budget. And this weekly show will focus on the intersection of money and the city girl lifestyle. Join me every week, along with some special guests, as I share my experiences, advice, and guidance on navigating life and money as an experience-loving millennial. Before we get into today's episode, I want to answer a City Girl Solutions question that came in. And just as a reminder, you can go to citygirlsavings.com forward slash QA to ask a question and I will answer it live on this podcast. So the question that I am answering today is, what do you think about Dave Ramsey? I feel like this is such a loaded question. So I have a few thoughts about Dave Ramsey. First, I do agree with some of his principles. I think that prioritizing debt payoff is important. I think Financial Peace University can be a great tool or resource for people who really have no idea where to start or what to do when it comes to paying off debt. However, I do not agree with his all or nothing approach. So Dave Ramsey is very much like until your debt is paid, you only eat rice and beans and ramen noodles and you're not contributing to a retirement plan. Like all of your extra money goes to debt, no spending on yourself. And I do not agree with that. I think the recipe for long-term success with budgeting, debt payoff, long-term financial goals is giving yourself a little bit to enjoy your life with as you're working towards those goals. So yes, you got to find a balance. Yes, you have to have moderation, but I do not believe you need to be eating ramen noodles for five years while you aggressively pay off your debt. So that is what I think about Dave Ramsey. Some of his stuff makes perfect sense. Other stuff, not so much. Okay, let's get into today's episode, eight things everyone should be saving for. So I'm about to get into this list of eight things, but first, I want you to know this. If any item I cover or list today does not feel good for you, does not fit your life goals, or just isn't a fit, period, that is 100% okay. Please, please, please don't feel like you have to save for anything that doesn't feel right just because I or society as a whole tells you to, okay? Save for the things that matter to you. I also want to share that some of these things that I will list today may seem intimidating or may make you feel like they're so far away from your life right now, but I need you to keep an open mind. Your ability to believe anything is possible for yourself is part of how you actually get those things. Okay, so be open minded and know that you can achieve anything you set your mind to, even if it feels forever and a day away. Okay, first thing everyone should be saving for is a home to call your own. The American dream looks different to everyone, but more often than not, a home is in that dream. Rent in this country will only continue to go up. So if you're paying for someone else's property, why not pay for your own? Now, again, this is totally up to you, but if having a place to call your own is part of your life's vision, then I think saving for a home should be a top priority. Now, when I say a home to call your own, I mean a mortgage-free home, okay? A home that can always be a place to live when nothing else seems to be working out. If your home 
is mortgage-free or not, you will always be required to pay property taxes. I feel like we can't escape that no matter where we are in this country. But that's worth it, at least to me, right? So I currently do not have a mortgage-free home, but I am aggressively working towards it. But when I do have a mortgage-free home, I will still have to pay property taxes, okay? Like that's never gonna stop. So don't think that once the home is paid off, like you're done, there's still stuff that comes up. But the point is a bank or a lender can't come in and take your property away from you when it's paid off. Now, most people can't afford to purchase a home outright. Obviously, I couldn't. But what you can do is start saving for your down payment. 20% is actually a fantastic down payment to start with. But with rising home costs in this country, I understand that that could also seem very far away. Just keep in mind that if you're paying anything below 20% down, you will have the extra added expense of PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. Total sidebar, but my boyfriend and I, we purchased our home in 2018. And PMI is assessed to your mortgage when you don't put down at least 20%, right? So your loan to home value needs to be 80% or less. So we purchased our home in 2018. So five years ago, and actually a little less than five years ago, but we actually just had a appraisal done and our loan to home value is less than 80%. So our PMI was removed five years early. Okay. So when we got our mortgage, it was predicted that our PMI would come off in 2028. Boom. Hello. We are PMI (laughs) free and we are aggressively working towards paying that home off. You may recall from episode 53 that one of my personal goals for 2023 is to pay off my half of the mortgage. My boyfriend's paying his half. So that is definitely something that I am aggressively saving for. So this item that I think everyone should be saving for, I am right there with you. Okay, so I feel like I took that a lot of different angles and I just want to come back to the goal is to save for a home to call your own. So obviously a mortgage-free home. And I think to start, you need to save for your down payment first, right? If you can save 20%, fantastic. If you can't, obviously save what you need to so that you can actually move forward with purchasing the home. Make sure you know it's within your budget if you get approved and things like that. But over time, you will want to be saving or putting more towards your mortgage so that you can pay it off. That's the thing everyone should be saving for, life at retirement. I cannot stress the importance of saving for retirement enough. I even have an entire episode about it. It's episode 44 and I'll link to it in the show notes. But the sad thing is saving for retirement is not taught in school. And when you're young, it's even more crucial to start saving for the decades out. I know it seems like, well, you know, it's so far away, like I'll worry about it later. But The way that investing in the stock market works is the more time you have, like the more your growth and returns compound. So if you haven't started saving for retirement yet, please don't beat yourself up. But I need you to like pause this episode, go start today, right? Whether it's through your employer or you open up an IRA, like we need to get on that ball right now. While I think there are so many reasons to save for retirement early in life and why I think this is definitely something everyone should be saving for, I think one of the most important reasons is so that you give yourself the freedom to not work if you don't have to, especially later in life. I would say that saving for retirement also goes hand in hand with saving for your own home, right? Because you don't want to be forced to work in your retirement years because you didn't pay your mortgage off in time, okay? And you also don't want to rely on the government to take care of you in your retirement years. I mean, who knows what that will even look like when that time comes. So making sure that you are putting money away for your life at retirement so that you give yourself the option to not work if you don't have to Definitely something everyone should be saving for. Okay, number three on my list, education for your children. Now, let me just say, if you don't want or plan to have kids, then feel free to skip this goal, okay? Remember, like, this is all what fits for you. But 
what if you have like nieces, nephews, younger siblings? Like this could apply to them. Education for your children or the children in your life. I mean, as most of us know, college is not cheap. And if you have kids or you plan on having kids, you can consider opening a 529 college savings account for them and contribute pre-tax money so that when they become of age to go to college, they can take that money and use it for school. Now, I will say that I actually have some clients who are saving for their children's future, but not in a 529 account. So one of my clients specifically is actually saving in just a general investment account for her daughter because she doesn't want to limit her daughter just to going to college, right? If her daughter wants to be an entrepreneur, she's putting money away so that her daughter has what she needs when she's ready to start her life at 18 or whatever age they decide. So a 529 account is a way to contribute pre-tax funds and it's a way for your money to work tax-free, right? As long as you spend that money on educational expenses, it's completely tax-free, but it has to be used for educational expenses to avoid paying taxes. So keep that in mind. But in case you don't know, a 529 account functions like a 401k or an IRA, except you're saving for college and education expenses, not retirement. And you deposit pre-tax money into the 529 account over the course of your child or the child's life and come time for college, ideally you'll have a nice nest egg to leverage tax-free. So most states actually offer 529 accounts directly, but also most financial institutions do as well. So you have some options there. Now you won't be able to open a 529 account until your child is actually born or the child is actually born, But if you know that it's coming or it will be in the future and you want to give yourself the ability to start saving now, you can always use like an online brokerage firm like Betterment. I love Betterment to save money ahead of time. Betterment specifically allows you to save for specific goals. And I think this can help you keep those goals front and center and keep an eye on what you're saving for. Got a money question you want me to answer on the podcast? I'm starting a new segment on the show called City Girl Solutions, where I answer any questions you have for me. Money, business, life, you name it. Submit your questions at citygirlsavings.com forward slash QA and get your question answered by me in a future episode. And did you know that we have so many free money resources on our blog, Instagram, and TikTok channels? Find us across the internet at City Girl Savings. Okay, next up. One of the things everyone should be saving for, a dream vacation, okay? So whether you like to travel or not, a dream vacation is absolutely worth saving for. Now for me, a dream vacation would be a multiple month, yes, month, exploration around Europe and Asia. Like I am dying to see all of the European countries, see all of the Asian countries, big and small, but that doesn't sound cheap, does it? (laughs) So the earlier I save for it, the more I will have when I am ready to take that trip. Now for you, a dream vacation may just be a month off of work to renovate your home, to just stay local or visit relatives. It does not matter what this dream vacation looks like. What matters is that you have the funds handy to take that vacation whenever you're ready. So vacation doesn't have to mean that you're traveling anywhere, right? It could just mean that you don't have to work for a certain amount of time. I feel like saving for a vacation is extremely motivating as well because you know that there is something at the end of all of your budgeting and money saving efforts. So go ahead and open up a savings account dedicated solely for travel or vacation and feel free to name it too for some extra brownie points. Also, make sure you check out episode 12 where I talk with a travel rewards coach. Yes, that's a thing about traveling in luxury for next to nothing. I'll make sure to link to it in the show notes. The next thing everyone should be saving for is an emergency and not a small one. Did you know that two-thirds of Americans would not be able to cover a $1,000 emergency? I mean, what if you lost your job? What if you had to go to the hospital? What if your car breaks down and you can't get to work? 
something that everyone should be saving for is a true emergency fund. Now, I feel like $1,000 is a common number. It's out there everywhere. It's definitely a great place to start. But at the end of the day, it is nowhere near enough to cover you if something tragic did happen, right? Three to six months worth of your monthly expenses is going to be your best bet. Now, I know it may not be quick and easy for you to save that amount. So just start stashing something away for it right now. And remember, no touching. Okay. So let's talk about this a little bit more because I know in the past, like, should I save or pay off debt has definitely come up. And I believe that before you aggressively pay off your debt, you should definitely have something saved. It does not have to be three to six months worth of expenses, but it does have to be a number that if something were to pop up, maybe not drastic or tragic, but something were to pop up, you could use your savings to cover that thing without impacting your budget or your debt payoff efforts. So I think 500 if like it's rare for something to pop up or you know, like your car is paid for it, like the likelihood of something popping up drastic is very small. So 500 could be a great place to start. But if you have kids or, you know, if your job is kind of like on the edge, having more, so now closer to the 1,000, 2,000 range is definitely ideal. But at the end of the day, the ultimate goal should be three to six months worth of expenses saved for your emergency fund. Next thing that everyone should be saving for or working towards is a life free of debt. Whether you have a mortgage, student loans, credit card debt, car loan, I know how heavy that can feel. I've been there. I've literally drowned in credit card debt. But what we should all be working towards is a life free of debt. Every month, you have to send a payment to your lenders to slowly pay down the debt. But imagine if you didn't have to do that. If you are paying $1,000 a month on all of your credit cards due to the minimums being what they are, imagine if that 1000 didn't have to go to your credit card payments. It could go to your savings account or it could stay in your checking. I'm telling you, a life free of debt is certainly worth saving for or working towards. And if you have a lot of debt, it can be difficult to know where to start with dealing with it all, but it all starts with the budget, okay? Understanding what income you bring home and what expenses must be covered will help you know what you can afford to put towards your debt to pay it off, right? So if you bring home $5,000 a month, all of your spending expenses is $4,000 a month, that leaves you with a thousand. Assuming you already have a savings, that's a thousand dollars a month extra that you can put towards your debt. But you wouldn't know that without the budget. So I want you to think of paying off your debt similar to saving money. Instead of that savings going into a savings account, it's savings that's actually going towards paying off your debt. Okay, next thing everyone should be saving for investments, investment properties or entrepreneurial endeavors. So let's say your home is paid off, you're on track to retire comfortably, and you are debt-free. Now it's time to start building wealth, start saving to build wealth. Investments via the stock market, investment properties, so homes that you rent out or sell, or starting your own business, those are all fantastic ways to build wealth. So think about what's important to you. Maybe you don't want your own business, but you like the thought of having rental properties. Maybe you don't want to deal with tenants, so you just want to flip houses. The great thing is that you can save for whatever investment opportunity is right for you. And this form of savings will actually yield amazing returns over time. Okay, finally, rounding out my list of things everyone should be saving for. The freedom to spend if you want or need to. How great would life be just to know you can fly across the country to see your mom, or you can take a long weekend and stay at a lake house, or you can bless a family member or friend in need, or you can take a sabbatical from work and not worrying about bills being paid. Having the freedom to spend or not spend your money how you want is an incredible accomplishment. At the end of the day, saving money so that you have the freedom to do what you want, where you want, when you want, how you want, and with who you want should be a high priority for all of us. 
I hope this list helps get your wheels turning. Anything that doesn't fit, feel free to leave it behind. But anything that does or you feel like you could want that in the future, it's okay to think about it. You don't have to work towards all of these things at once, right? Slow and steady wins the race, my friend. So before I let you go, did you know that I create budget plans for clients and I offer one-on-one money coaching? So I coach my clients through the habits, routines, and mindset they need to set a budget and actually stick to it. You can learn more by checking out citygirlsavings.com and clicking on the financial coaching page under work with Rhea. I would love to help you if you need it. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope that you are ready to start your savings journey and I hope that this list made a difference. See you next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to City Girl Savings today. I hope you feel empowered and inspired to master your money as you make your way to your dream life. Make sure you subscribe so you're the first to know when a new episode comes out. I truly value your thoughts and feedback, so please leave a review and let me know how this podcast has impacted you. Can't wait to chat soon and make it a great day.